I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that you can apply to your videos going forward in Camtasia. We're gonna show you how to make loopable animated background patterns. These are super useful for like interstitials, titles, intros, anywhere where you would have negative space that you wanna add a little bit of a visual impact to, you can use uh, these types of patterns. I'll show you how to make a couple basic ones today just using shapes in Camtasia, but the loopable part is something that you can noodle on with applying it to logos, etc. And also include some cool treatments that you can leverage uh, in the description below. So let's go ahead and check it out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna locate the annotations tab and go over to the uh, shapes tab at the top here. And I'm just gonna use the basic rectangle and I'm gonna just draw across and zoom in. And I just wanna make sure I'm in the upper left quadrant of the canvas. And, uh, and I'm gonna use my arrows just to see that I am visually flush to the left and the top. And then I'm just gonna keep doing this effect. So I'm gonna repeat this, this, uh, this technique and I'm just gonna draw across. Vertically, it doesn't matter that I get it perfect. I'll show you a trick on how to line those up vertically uh, at once when we're done. But I'm just gonna draw a row all the way across and make sure that everything is, is in fact flush. So I'll draw four across. Now the basic rectangle is one eighth. If it's one eighth, I've got four across now. I can just select all of those and I'm gonna go over to the properties and I'm gonna go ahead and set the vertical height here or the vertical position rather to 450. I know that's the number I need to get it flush top and I'm just gonna copy, let's make sure I've got these selected, copy and paste those and then I can just drag it across and you can see I have a pretty nice row going across. Now I'm just gonna repeat this a couple times, a few times and I'm gonna copy and paste flush, make sure I'm looking good. Yep, looking good so far. And I'm just gonna drag, select all. I'm just gonna keep repeating this technique so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, and then I just need two more rows, it looks like. Copy, paste, and let's go ahead and drag that down. And just like that, I have a whole block of, of white, but there's more here. I've got these little gaps that was formed by the corner radius of that rectangle. And now I've got these really cool stars. So we've already made a cool pattern that we can leverage. Um, now, the other cool thing you can do is you can just select all of these and you can change the shapes all at once. So the rectangles give you the little star, but if I wanna go into the shapes properties, I can just change the shapes to say circles. So now that gives me like this nice negative space star that I can leverage, like a four point star if you look in the negative space. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and try uh, Let's try uh, stars. Stars are not as interesting in my opinion. Uh, triangles, I think triangles look pretty cool. Uh, I think they're gonna work really well for this particular treatment I'm gonna show you. So let's go ahead and use these. So now that I have these selected, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and group this. And you can see I had a, a lot of tracks created there. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all the empty tracks and I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to just uh, shape uh, source, we'll call it. Okay, so now anytime I wanna change these shapes or mess with them at all, I can just enter this group and play with the shapes here by selecting all like we just did. So let's go ahead and take this though and let's move it up to, um, to track two. And I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste just so I have two of those. So just copy and paste is our duplicate in, in uh, Camtasia, right? So I'm gonna take track one that I just added and I'm gonna move that shape down. Whoops, try that again. I'm gonna move that shape down so that it's flush to the very bottom. So the top of that group is now flush to the bottom of the canvas, okay? So now I'm gonna select both of those, and this is where I'm gonna show you how to make these things loopable, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to animations, and I'm gonna go ahead and select the custom animation, and I'm gonna drag this down, and let's go ahead and make it so that it's about, let's, let's say uh, half of what the, the media length is here. And then I'm just gonna move my media down to snap to it. So it's a, it's a pretty short animation, two and a half seconds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna animate this up so that it goes flush bottom. So just one drag. So now that that, that sort of track one area uh, or that track one shape that we created there, that duplicate, that was off screen is now fully on screen. We've animated that to happen. So now I'm just gonna pull these arrows all the way down. And now I'm gonna show you what we have here. So if I just go ahead and play back, you can see those two groups just animate. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna group those and I'm gonna call it, uh, let's call it um, animated or let's call it looping uh, shapes, okay? And I'm gonna copy and paste 
and let's just do a couple more copy paste operations. So we'll paste, uh, we'll do it three times. Okay, so if I go back now, we're just going to show you how fast we just made loopable animations. Just like that, you can't discern where the seams are. This is a really cool trick that you can use for all kinds of shapes, including uh, shapes that you have like for your business or shapes that you draw in other graphics tools. Uh, but you can see even with the triangles, we've got a nice little look going and we haven't even applied any visual styling to it yet. This is just something we can map with or apply different effects to, right? So let's go ahead and take these things that we've looped. We can create any number of these that we want and then group them. Um, in fact, I'll leave these ungrouped for now and I'm gonna pull them up to track two. I can use them as a track mat or I could just have them animating on top of something going on underneath this. So in this case, how about we go over uh, to our annotation bin again, and we're gonna draw one of our cool gradients. We have a video uh, that I created a, a little while back on how to create really good gradient um, uh, sort of visual touches to uh, annotations in Camtasia. Locate that video, I'll throw it in the description uh, for a deeper dive, but I'll go ahead and show you a real basic way to do it right here. So I'm gonna go over to bold. Bold gives me a rectangle that has perfectly sharp edges, crisp edges, and I'm gonna drag this down to track one just like so. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this guy and I'm gonna stretch him all the way down so that his center point is just below the bottom of the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and color this as dark as I can and then I'm gonna change the fill type to gradient. And now you can see I have a little gradient happening. Now I just need to exaggerate it by going to visual effects. I'm gonna select color adjustment and I drop that on and I'm gonna locate the color adjustment properties, right? So I've got these sliders and I'm just gonna crank those sliders up. So now I have a pretty decent fall off from white to black. And now I'm gonna apply a color tint. And so I grab my color tint effect and I apply that. And again, I'm gonna crank the slider of intensity up just like that. You see, I have a really beautiful looking gradient behind this. And so if I play back, a pretty nice look. Now I could grab this and I could say, hey, let's mess with the opacity a little bit, right? So let's go ahead and, and check this out. A pretty cool look. So you can see we already have something that we can work with here that gives you some ideas on how you can add this to your videos, um, but let's go further. So if I go ahead and increase the opacity, uh, let's bring this up to track three now, and let's go ahead and duplicate this gradient. And now I'm gonna group it. And grouping this allows me to do a rotation, all right? Otherwise, Camtasia will always try to force that gradient to have a certain direction. When you group it, it traps it um, into a rasterized uh, image we can use. So now I have that grouped, I have it rotated. I'm gonna use track three as a track mat and I'm gonna use it as an alpha track mat. Now check out this effect. Pretty sweet, huh? You have those two gradients, if I zoom in, you have those two gradients sort of intersecting with each other um, in a really interesting way with how that mat is, is uh, relating to that track one uh, gradient that we created. So a pretty cool effect. Now, if you wanted to go even further, you could mess um, with opacity. So that's certainly something that you could explore and just see, okay, where, what's the right way to dial this in? So a pretty cool effect, and you can see how fast we're able to achieve this. This was a really easy one to pull off. There's all kinds of ways we can improve upon this. I'll try to throw a few examples in on the description that you can check out. Also be sure to check out the gradient video, and if you want some additional tricks on how to do some interesting animations around titling or subscribe buttons, which by the way, you should totally like and subscribe and hit that notification bell, check out the asset that was created in Camtasia 2. Um, these effects are really easy to pull off and uh, I hope you're able to take this and run with it by trying it with some PDFs or try it with some other images that you've created. Um, the loopable part is something that adds a lot of dynamism to those interstitials and, and, uh, and those title cards. So enjoy, practice, and have fun. See you later.